Ingrid E. Newkirk, born June 11, 1949, is a British animal rights activist and the president of People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals PETA, the world's largest animal rights organization. She is the author of several books, including Making Kind Choices 2005, and the PETA Practical Guide to Animal Rights, Simple Acts of Kindness to Help Animals in Trouble 2009. Newkirk has worked for the animal protection movement since 1972. Under her leadership in the 1970s as the District of Columbia's first female poundmaster, legislation was passed to create the first spate-neuter clinic in Washington, D.C., as well as an adoption program and the public funding of veterinary services, leading her to be among those chosen in 1980 as Washingtonians of the Year. Newkirk founded PETA in March 1980 with fellow animal rights activist Alex Pacheco. They came to public attention in 1981, during what became known as the Silver Spring Monkeys case, when Pacheco photographed 17 macaque monkeys being experimented on inside the Institute of Behavioral Research in Silver Spring, Maryland. The case led to the first police raid in the United States on an animal research laboratory and to an amendment in 1985 to the Animal Welfare Act. Since then, Newkirk has led campaigns to stop the use of animals in crash tests, convinced companies to stop testing cosmetics on animals, pressed for higher welfare standards from the meat industry, and organized undercover investigations that have led to government sanctions against companies, universities, and entertainers who use animals. She is known, in particular, for the media stunts that she organizes to draw attention to animal protection issues. In her will, for example, she has asked that her skin be turned into wallets, her feet into umbrella stands, and her flesh into Newkirk nuggets, then grilled on a barbecue. We are complete press sluts, she told The New Yorker in 2003, it is our obligation. We would be worthless if we were just polite and didn. T make any waves. Although PETA takes a gradualist approach to improving animal welfare, Newkirk remains committed to ending animal use and the idea that, as PETA's slogan says, animals are not ours to eat, wear, experiment on, or use for entertainment. Quote dot. Some animal rights abolitionists, most notably Gary Francione, have criticized PETA, calling it and other groups the new welfareists. Quote dot. Some members of the animal advocacy movement have responded that Francione's position is unnecessarily divisive. Newkirk has also been criticized for her support of actions carried out in the name of the Animal Liberation Front. Newkirk's position is that the animal rights movement is a revolutionary one and that t Hinkers may prepare revolutions, but bandits must carry them out. Quote dot. PETA itself, however, maintains a creed of nonviolence and does not advocate actions in which anyone, human or non-human, is injured. Newkirk and PETA have also been criticized for euthanizing many of the animals taken into PETA's shelters, and PETA has responded to this line of criticism. PETA has been on the news in the southern part of India for banning of Jalikatu sport which is a cultural symbol of Tamils for thousands of years. The state is witnessing one of the biggest leaderless agitation using social media as a tool to organize these massive protests. Biography Early life Newkirk was born in Britain, where she lived in the Orkney Islands and in Ware, Hertfordshire. Her father was a navigational engineer, and when she was seven, the family moved to New Delhi, India, where her father worked for the government, while her mother volunteered for Mother Teresa in a leper colony and a home for unwed mothers. Newkirk attended a convent boarding school in the Himalayas for well-to-do Indian nationals and non-natives. It was the done thing for a British girl in India. She told Michael Spector for The New Yorker. But I was the only British girl in this school. I was hit constantly by nuns, starved by nuns. The whole god thing was shoved right down my throat." Newkirk helped her mother out in the leper colony, packing pills and rolling bandages, stuffing toys for orphans, and feeding strays, and says that this informed her view that anyone in need, including animals, was worthy of concern, along with her mother's advice that it doesn't matter who suffers, but how. 
She tells the story of an early experience of trying to rescue an animal, when she heard laughter in the alleyway behind the family home in New Delhi. A group of people had bound a dog's legs, muzzled him, then lowered him into a muddy ditch, laughing as they watched him try to escape. Newkirk asked her servant to bring the dog to her, and tried to get him to drink some water, but someone had packed his throat with mud, and he died in her arms. She told the Financial Times that it was a turning point. When she was 18, the family moved to Florida, where her father worked on designing bombing systems for the United States Air Force. It was there that she met her husband, Steve Newkirk. The couple divorced in 1980. He introduced her to Formula One racing, which, along with sumo wrestling, remains one of her great passions. According to The New Yorker, it S sex. The first time you hear them rev their engines, my god. That noise goes straight up my spine. Introduction to animal protection Until she was 22, Newkirk had given no thought to animals' rights or even vegetarianism. In 1970, she and her husband moved to Poolsville, Maryland, where she studied to become a stockbroker. A neighbor abandoned some kittens, and Newkirk decided to take them to an animal shelter. She told Spectre, When I arrived at the shelter, the woman said, Come in the back and we will just put them down there. I thought, how nice. You will set them up with a place to live. So I waited out front for a while, and then I asked if I could go back and see them, and the woman just looked at me and said, What are you talking about? They are all dead. I just snapped when I heard those kittens were dead. The woman was so rude. The place was a junk heap in the middle of nowhere. It cooled dn. T have been more horrible. For some reason, and even now I don. T know what it was, I decided I needed to do something about it. So I thought, I'm going to work here. Newkirk took a job in the kennels, witnessing the mistreatment of the animals, including physical abuse. Kathy Snow Guillermo writes that Newkirk disinfected kennels by day, and by night studied animal care, animal behavior, and animal cruelty investigations. I went to the front office all the time, and I would say, John is kicking the dogs and putting them into freezers. Or I would say, they are stepping on the animals, crushing them like grapes, and they don't care. In the end, I would go to work early, before anyone got there, and I would just kill the animals myself. Because I couldn't stand to let them go through that. I must have killed a thousand of them, sometimes dozens every day. Some of those people would take pleasure in making them suffer. And it was my duty to save them. She blew the whistle on the shelter and became an animal protection officer, first for Montgomery County, Maryland, then for the District of Columbia. She became D.C. S. first female poundmaster, persuading the city to fund veterinary services and to set up an adoption program, an investigations department, and a pet sterilization program. By 1976, she was head of the Animal Disease Control Division of the District of Columbia Commission on Public Health. Newkirk's work with PETA Founding of PETA in 1980, Newkirk met Alex Pacheco in a D.C. shelter where he was working as a volunteer. It was Pacheco who introduced Newkirk to the concept of animal rights. Pacheco presented her with a copy of Peter Singer's Animal Liberation 1975. She has said that Singer had put into words what she had felt intuitively for a long time, and she called Pacheco Alex the Abdul, a name given to messengers in Muslim stories. The concept of animal rights was at that time almost unheard of in the U.S. The modern animal rights movement had started in England eight years earlier, in 1972, when a group of Oxford University scholars, particularly philosophers, had formed the Oxford Group to promote the idea that discrimination against against individuals on the basis of their species is as irrational as discrimination on the basis of race or sex. In March 1980, Newkirk and Pacheco decided to form a group to educate the American public about these ideas, at first consisting of what Newkirk called five people in a basement. The couple also fell in love and began living together, although they were very different. 
Newkirk was older, practical, and very organized, whereas Pacheco spent his time in white painter's overalls eating vegetarian hot dogs straight from the can. Silver Spring Monkeys the case of the Silver Spring Monkeys, an animal research controversy that lasted ten years, transformed PETA from just Newkirk, Pacheco, and a small group of friends into an international movement. In mid 1981, Pacheco took a job as a volunteer inside the Institute of Behavioral Research in Silver Spring, Maryland, so that he and Newkirk would have some first hand knowledge on which to base their campaigns. Edward Taub, a psychologist, was working there on 17 monkeys. He had cut sensory ganglia that supplied nerves to their arms and legs, then used physical restraint, electric shock, and withholding of food to force them to use the limbs. The idea was to see whether monkeys could be induced to use limbs they could not feel. Pacheco repeatedly went into the lab at night to take photographs and to escort scientists, including veterinarians and a primatologist, through it to secure their testimony. Newkirk lay crouched on the back seat of a car outside, hidden under a large cardboard box with holes for her eyes, using a walkie-talkie from a toy store to alert Pacheco if anyone else entered the building. The monkeys' living conditions documented by Pacheco were graphically disturbing. Having collected the evidence, Newkirk and Pacheco alerted the police, who raided the lab, removed the monkeys, and charged Taub with 113 counts of cruelty to animals and six counts of failing to provide adequate veterinary care. Taub maintained that he had been set up by Newkirk and Pacheco while he was on vacation and that several of the photographs had been staged. The judge found Taub guilty of six counts of cruelty to animals for failing to provide adequate veterinary care and fined him $3,000. A later jury trial saw five of these counts dismissed, and the sixth was overturned on appeal because of a technicality. The National Institutes of Health, which had funded Taub, S. Research was among the scientists and other professionals who criticized the conditions in which Taub had kept the monkeys, though the NIH later reversed its decision when the charges against Taub were overturned. Newkirk and Pacheco found themselves thrust overnight into the public eye. The images of the restrained animals became iconic after the Washington Post published one of them on its front page. It was the first police raid on an animal research facility in the U.S. and the first conviction subsequently overturned of an animal researcher. The controversy led to an amendment to the 1985 Animal Welfare Act, became the first animal rights case to be heard before the United States Supreme Court, and established PETA as an internationally known animal rights group, with Newkirk as its outspoken president. Attitude toward the ALF Newkirk has been criticized for publicizing actions carried out in the name of the Animal Liberation Front ALF. She supports the goals of the ALF, arguing that, "...not until black demonstrators resorted to violence did the national government work seriously for civil rights legislation." In 1850 white abolitionists, having given up on peaceful means, began to encourage and engage in actions that disrupted plantation operations and liberated slaves. Was that all wrong? She has said that she understands, but shrinks from, actions that involve arson. I do support getting animals out in the same way I would have supported getting human slaves out, child labor, sex slaves, the whole lot. But I don. T support burning. I don. T support arson. I would rather that these buildings weren't. T standing, so on some level one understand. I just don. T like the idea of that. Maybe that is wishy-washy of me, because I don't want those buildings standing if they are going to hurt anyone. And the ALF has never hurt mice nor mare. She has been accused of having had advanced knowledge of one ALF action. During the 1995 trial of Rod Coronado, in connection with an arson attack at Michigan State University MSU, U.S. Attorney Michael Detmer alleged that Newkirk had arranged, in advance of the attack, to have Coronado send her stolen documents from the university and a videotape of the action. Public image Newkirk and her cause provoke strong feelings, both positive and negative. Spectre, who did not see eye to eye with her, wrote, Newkirk is well read, and she can be witty. 
when she is not proselytizing, denouncing, or attacking the 99% of humanity that sees the world differently from the way she does, she is good company. After years of detestable public behavior, however, she has the popular image of a monster. Whenever I mentioned her name to friends, they would recoil. And she becomes more disliked with every PETA stunt, she can't walk through an airport without accosting any woman who is wearing fur. She no longer takes vacations in tropical or poor countries like Mexico, because I spend the whole time rescuing animals from their horrid owners. Spector also questioned her about a 2003 letter that she wrote to Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat to protest the use of a donkey as a suicide bomber. We are named people for the ethical treatment of animals. She replied. There are plenty of other groups that worry about the humans. Elsewhere, Newkirk has said, In this business I am very easy to cubby hole. As someone said to me the other day, they had seen the HBO special, and they said, Are you really a sad obsessed person? And I thought, no, I am not really a sad person, except when I lie awake at night in winter thinking about all the animals out without shelter, and then I am sad. Who wouldn't? TV. Wouldn't. T anybody be sad if they have a heart? It. S just that I. They seem so much. The following quote was actually made by her under a pseudonym. If you haven't given voluntary human extinction much thought before, the idea of a world with no people in it may seem strange. But, if you give it a chance, I think you might agree that the extinction of Homo sapiens would mean survival for millions, if not billions, of Earth-dwelling species. Phasing out the human race will solve every problem on Earth, social and environmental. Less unite. Pseudonym Newkirk has had celebrity friends and admirers who have spoken highly of her. Sam Simon said in an interview. I learned about animal rights from my favorite person in the whole world, Ingrid Newkirk at PETA." Also, Alec Baldwin contributed the following blurb to Newkirk's book Making Kind Choices, Ingrid Newkirk is not only a thoughtful animal rights and environmental activist. She is an inspirational leader, a heroine, a woman upon whom so many depend, around the world, for information and guidance. In a world where all animals, everywhere, are more threatened than ever, Ingrid Newkirk is their champion. Newkirk has been accused of employing a double standard for her organization's practice of euthanizing animals for which it has neither the space nor resources to shelter. Deborah Saunders, a critic of Newkirk, argues that, PETA assails other parties for killing animals for food or research. Then it kills animals, but for really important reasons, such as running out of room. Newkirk explains on PETA's website that, as long as animals are still purposely bred and people aren't spaying and neutering their companions, open admission animal shelters and organizations like PETA must do society's dirty work. Euthanasia is not a solution to overpopulation but rather a tragic necessity given the present crisis. Newkirk and PETA both oppose animal testing out of principle as well as on practical grounds. Specter asked whether she would be opposed to experiments on 5,000 rats, or even chimpanzees, if it was needed to cure AIDS. She replied, Would you be opposed to experiments on your daughter if you knew it would save 50 million people? Awards Washingtonian of the Year, 1980 Courage of Conscience Award, 1995 Shining World Compassion Award, 2007 Ahimsa Award, 2014 Peter Singer Prize for Strategies to Reduce the Suffering of Animals, 2016 Works See also Women and Animal Advocacy References External links Gulkin, Matthew, Director
I Am an Animal, The Story of Ingrid Newkirk and Pita, a television production for HBO, November 2007. Fowler, Hayden. Interview with Ingrid Newkirk about the HBO documentary on YouTube, retrieved February 24, 2008. Interview with Ingrid Newkirk in Imagineer magazine.